Bermuda really got a flying start in the center and she leads them in the very early stages. Hit the track, Jack is right up there, so too is Tin Hat. Also, Northwind is flashing speed and Rolling King is right up there. Meanwhile, towards the near side, it's Cipelli who leads the near side group, being followed next by Moonlight Romance and then Lai Chi. The one who's circulated in the center of the course is Kassar as they race on now down towards the halfway point. On the far side, Rolling King has got the lead of Queen of Bermuda, who is racing in second. Reminders for North Wind. There's being followed by Well Done Fox. Well Done Fox then is being followed by the trying to stay on Rockin Roy. Over on the far side, Tin Hat is picking up as well. They're racing now down towards the final fill and a half, and it's towards the near side that Well Done Fox has taken the lead with Soldiers Call towards the near side. And as they race inside the final half furlong, it is Soldiers Call who goes on to Sabre now racing in second. The action towards the near side, and it is Soldiers Call out in front for Danny Tunno. Soldiers call win, Sabre in second, tight third, Don Carlos was flying, over on the far side was Von Beethoven, who was followed by Tin Hat, then Don Carlos, and they were followed, I should say, after Don Carlos came uh, Junos Brutius, and then Lee Hu, who stayed on past horses on the outside, Rockin Roy, and then Well Done Fox was back in the field, followed next by James Watt. So, Danny Tudhoe wins and a first winner at Royal Ascot for one of the new young stars of the training game, Archie Watson, and he's blazed a trail on the near side as Soldier's Call has won and won clearly the first two home dominating towards the near side of the Windsor Castle. Ed Walker yesterday. Archie Watson today, the next breed of trainer, if you like, the youngsters, and it's a first Royal Ascot winner for Archie. A huge moment for Steve Park and the owner who put so much into this game, and Clipper Logistics, soldiers call on the far side there, Kevin. It seemed to be going through the race that the far side may have been where the pace primarily was, but look how, look at the way Soldier's Call is quickened away from the remainder there, and as it's turned out, it's Sabre who's coming from the same side as him that has ultimately made him do, do the most, but Soldier's Call has won quite well, I thought, at the line. Flying late, Don Carlos down the middle, likewise Sabre in second, who was last early on. Richard Farr, he hits the bar at Royal Ascot again, the story of his week so far but soldiers call big moment for archie watson this is huge for him am i right in saying jason that he won the all-weather trainers championship over the winter he just knows how to improve older horses he's obviously good with two-year-olds as well as he's displayed here he is an absolute star of the younger training ranks and jason the first two over the line drawn high yeah they were i mean it looked as if the, the, runners, on the, Jason. Yeah, the <laughs> runners on the low side were holding an advantage but look at the way that the two managed to rattle home on this side that just goes to show as far as people thinking you you just have to have that rocket pace in the early stages this horse really fights late on he bumped into glory fighter and glory fighter at charlie hills was very much fancied earlier on in the week but i tell you what can you really say that there's a huge bias one side or the other it's not like a massive amount between either either side high or low well done danny tadhope there the jockey Quickly see, we'll watch that again in a minute, see where Don Carlos came from, from miles back. Let's go to the winner with Rishi. Danny Tadhope has won on the Saturday of Royal Ascot once again, outdo last year. Saturday seems to be your day here, Danny. It's been a long week, you know, but um, very hard to get winners here. And listen, I'm, very, I'm just delighted for Archie, you know, you can see how much it meant to him there. It's his first Royal Ascot winner and, and you get a winner here for me is a bonus. How good a performance was this and how good a race was it? It's a great performance, you know, he's, he's got so much speed, this horse. I was a bit behind the rest of them on the, the far side, but I was able to, to do my own thing where I was, nothing hassled me. Got a nice breather in too many. And he won nicely in the end. I'm going to go over and speak to the winning trainer who is nearby, Archie Watson. Congratulations, Archie, first of all, on Thank doing you this. You came so close. We can walk back in with the horse. You came so close when... Nate the Great nearly won the first race. A little bit of frustration there, but proud in that performance. But how does it feel to finally get one over the line? Oh, look, I, mean, it, I thought uh, after Nate, I was delighted with him, but I was gutted. And um, look, it's only our second year training, our second year with runners here. And um, I thought I might have to wait a bit longer than an hour. But look, <laughs> this, this horse, he, he means a lot to us. Um, you know, Joe Foley, Steve Parkin. You know, and, and, and Cliff Logistics and Federico Barberini, they've all put a lot of faith in me as a second season trainer and, you know, sent me some proper kit. And I'm just delighted that I can 
um, you know, repay that faith. And uh, Danny Tollop's a world-class jockey, and you know, I'm very lucky to be able to have him ride my horses. And like, it means a lot to the whole team, to myself and Claire, to Chris and Steph and Alex and my travelling out lads, Jack and Jade. And everyone works so hard, and they're a young team, and they deserve this. Obviously, many congratulations. Hopefully, the first of many Royal Ascot winners. Well done. So. Thanks, Richard. Archie Watson, who started off with just three horses, three, in 2016, two years later, is a Royal Ascot hero. 12 to 1, Soldier Score. Sabre at 12, Dom Carlos at 16, Van Beethoven at 6 to 1. He goes to bed with the program book. It's a good way to live. Right, back to the start. The American horses want to keep an eye on here, Jason. Yeah, he jumped out. I think momentarily oh, right. our rider looked as if he just may have lost a little bit of his right hand iron. The eventual second was drawn with him, but dropped Lost. out towards the back of the pack as over on the far side they were led a merry gallop. But I hadn't realised where the winner had come from because he basically had to do it all. He jumped well and was on the front end throughout, so didn't have any horses to keep in company, didn't get any cover. I'm looking at the right one, aren't I? Yeah, out in front there in the grey colours, Soldier's Call has had to make the whole running, but any hard luck stories? Well, just look at Don Carlos here, Jason, right at the back, blue and white. He, he has made up. Now, an, he, now he comes. He has made up an incredible amount of late ground. I watched him there at the start. He missed the kick a little bit. Here he comes, look. Ultimately, he was just outpaced early, I think, Ed. He was off the bridle from the outset, and he has done some serious work in the closing stages to get up for third. An extra furlong will be the order of the day for him, I think. But the winner for Steve Parkin in Clipper Logistics. We saw him celebrating earlier on. These are his colours, a man who puts a lot into the game. Absolutely, and you would have seen him celebrating there with Joe Foley, who's a, a chief advisor, if you will, the, the, the owner of Ballyhane Stud, and widely considered one of the cleverest men in, in Irish bloodstock, so he has the right man on side there. And it's a big operation. That's Steve here, with his back to us. Huge supporter of the sport, so enthusiastic. Huge Leeds United fan, and he will be made up about this. And likewise, his young trainer, Archie Watson. Another maiden broken. There he is, Archie. He'll be pleased, because when these youngsters, the new kids on the block, have their first winner, like Ed Walker did yesterday, you don't want to be missing out. Oh, 100%, and he's so competitive. Archie has a knack, not just of training the good ones. I mean, Corinthian Knight has been a real improver for the stable and for the and the high the high sprint level as well and he hasn't been training that long has he jason not that long ago he was assistant trainer to william haggis and i think he's also spent time in south africa was it for joe ransom i think over there so he's a uh, well traveled and got plenty of experience under his belt and putting it to good use well done to soldiers called pierre is the man who looks after this horse, who has won the Windsor Castle. But now we need to focus on the big sprint today, one of the big races of the week. How do they bet, boys? Yes, it's big race time. It's England against Ireland. It's Ireland and England against America. It's Ireland, England, America against Australia and Francesca Camani. Here we go. Five to two, Harry Angel on one board, 11 to four. You can get three to one in the ring, Harry Angel. Merchant Navy is at four to one for Ireland, uh, Brian. And Red Curl Warrior also at four to one. Horses like the Tin Man at 15 to two. Bigger prices elsewhere. Merchant Navy, do you think he can do it for Aiden? He's going to be finishing. Aiden says he's a big, sleepy horse at home. This could wake him up. He'll be finishing. But will Harry Angel be gone? Time will tell. Time will tell. There's the pre-parades, and the tension will build ahead of the Group 1 action. It's the perfect scenario, this race, with horses from all over the world, which is exactly what this race is all about, the international flavour. Right, we will focus on the big race more in a few moments' time, but now is time for the final part of our series. Part 5 of Sir Anthony McCoy meets their dad, Aidan O'Brien, Donica on the left, Joseph on the right, today, all about family.